Hello, let's talk about Meteor Methods. Meteor Method is a way that you can send messages to your server and also receive messages from your server. And we are going to talk about how to call a simple method, how to provide arguments in an effective way, how to check your arguments, and also how to promisify, like how to use a promise when you're calling your methods. And to wrap up, like what is simulation, like what Meteor is doing that your methods can run really fast for the client. Okay, so let's see some code here. First, I'm going to start creating a Meteor app, okay? And then I'm going to run this app. Let's run it here. So that's the simple app using React and Meteor. I'm just, just going to clear the logs and it's a very simple app. Then what we're going to do here with methods is just try to remove some links from here. Then I'm going to go to my main from the server folder and I'm going to add my first method here, meter methods. And then I'm going to call remove link. And first let's see if this is working. Then I'm just going to put a log here. Remove link was called. And I'm going to hit save. Then meter is going to refresh my server. And I'm going to call. I'm not going to use the code in my list of links yet. I'm just going to use my console. Then I'm going to type meter, but increase it a bit, meter call remove link. And hit enter. And as you can see on my server, because my method is in my server side, then it's going to bring to my console. So let's continue this work. Let's remove a link. But to remove a link, we need to receive a link ID or some identifier here. Like link ID, you can put like this and we can have, we have our link collections here. So let's remove it by ID, link ID. So now if I use my Meteor Chrome extension, I can get my ID from my mini Mongo. This ID from the do the tutorial and I can go back to my console and I can call again, now provide a second argument that's going to be my ID. Then always first is the name and then the arguments and hit enter. And as you can see, the ID, this do the tutorial is gone. And if you look to the meter tab here, you can see that it's gone from our local database here in the client. And we also have a lot of messages here and they removed. And meter is doing all of this for you, like very, in a very simple way. Okay, then let's go back to here and I want to teach you like how to how I prefer to provide my arguments because if I need to have a different argument now, let's suppose that you need to do something else like oh, I want to also have the user ID. And then like my user ID, if I have it, it will be like this. Then it's going to be very hard to identify like which one is my user ID and which one is my link ID then I prefer to using my methods just one argument and it's an object and so to have to receive this object I need to provide an object here as well then I need to change this to have like link ID that's not required but I think it's a lot easier to keep your methods in the long time in the long run now if I if I try to remove I'm not removing anything because I'm using the same ID and it's already removed it, but I can get a different one now. Let's get the second one, follow the guide, and let's return to the console, replace here, and follow the guide is gone. Then it's working, now providing an argument with names like an object. Okay, so, but if I provide an integer here, what's going to happen? Like if I provide something like weird, it's going to try to remove, but my ID is not an integer, my ID is a string. So I can also use another package that's called meter check. And then I can check if my arguments are correct. Oh, sorry. Like link ID should be a string. Now if I call again, and I'm going to do, to do this, with a number, we will receive an error in the client and also an error in the server. And that's a very effective way for you to check your input. It should be a string and we got a number, then meter is throwing an error for us. So 
let's fix it. Let's call again with a correct string. Oh, let me clear this a little bit. And then nothing's going to happen. Uh, the error was here already. Like the error is not, let me clear this as well. So you can see the error is not happening anymore because this is a string. But of course, in this case, I don't have this link here. Then you could like throw an error if this remove is not removing, but that's not related to methods. I'm not going to do this now, but I'm just going to test to be sure that my code is still working. I'm going to get the next document here and I'm going to remove it. Yep, one more and let's remove the last one. So we can remove all the items. This code is going to create the items again if they are empty. So we are going to have the, the links back when we restart the server. Okay, uh, now what I'm also going to show you, like you're calling meter like this, meter call, meter call. But let's see if you can put in the UI, not like calling the console, but it will be pretty much the same. So I'm going to go to my UI. I'm not concerned about like the style here. I'm just going to put a button and I'm going to put like remove. Maybe I can just try to put some margin left here, at least not be terrible. It's going to be bad, but not terrible. Yep. Oh, sorry. It's missing a letter here. Let's clear and let's restart the server because Mitchell is just restarting the client. If you do any changes here, it's going to restart the server, but you can also just like run Meteor again. But if you restart, we have a code that's creating every time that we start the server, the links again. So we have the links again, and now we have the remote but remove button. Okay, so let me remove this two from here. And we can now remove the, the, the links using the UI. But if I click here, I don't have a on-click handler yet. So let's implement it. Like uh, remove handler. This is React code. And you can get a link. And then I'm going to get my event handler. And then I'm going to call meter call. And the same thing that we did in the in the console, remove link. I'm going to also let me just break the line so it's easier to follow. And link dot on the line ID. So if I put my own click here, on click, I can provide my handler with my link. And that's it. Let's save. And we can remove here and let's see if this is going to work. Yeah, it's working, it's working, and it's working. Okay, so let's restart this to have our links again. And let's understand what's going on a little bit here with Meteor. So I'm going to go back to the Meteor DevTools. It's very important to use the DevTools so you can understand better what's happening behind the scenes. Let me clear these logs a little bit. Oh, I have the clear button here. Okay, so when I remove, what's going to happen? First, Meteor is calling the Meteor remove, providing my, my object here. And also Meteor is like applying the result from the change in my server in my client and removing my link from my collection links. Okay, and the return of the method. But we can also try to understand what's going to happen if we don't have like the server running. Let me kill the server and let me click here. The server is not running anymore, okay? So I'm going to click here and nothing is happening because Meteor is not able to send this message. We can try to replay here, but our server is still down. So the three links are here. So let's start again the server and let's see what is going to happen. Okay, now the server is reconnected. So if you try again to run, it's going to work. Can you see? Now it was removed. Okay, then Meteor is not doing anything in the client first, it's doing in the server first. But why? It's because we are not using a feature of Meteor that's called simulation, because our method is only in the server. So let's remove this code from here and let's put this code with the collection. 
because the collection is also included in the client. So we can see like simulation working. And we have our check method here as well. Let's save. I can even restart my server and clear this again and refresh here. Oops. And refresh here. Okay, my server is restarted. So now we should have also this running in the client. Can you see now that I added this and this file, as you can see, is imported in the client as well, as you can see here, because we are getting the data from, from the Minimongo. So you can see the log that's here is running in the server and in the client. If you return the video a little bit, you are going to see that previously it was just running in the server. And what's the good part about this? Let's kill our server again. So we don't have the server. Let's go to our meter extension again. And then let's remove now and see if that's going to be different. Can you see now? The data was removed from the client because the code also run the remove in the client, as you can see in the console here. So it was already removed. And when I reconnect my server, I'm going to reconnect my server. And the data is back because in the server, the data was still there. So my remove it failed. We have ways that you can replay the methods and to like to try to keep it consistent. The problem here is that it refresh the page, so it loses this, this state. But if you just go offline and return online, it is capable of replaying the method. But let's clear again. And now let's see when you are online, like the same thing is going to happen as previously. But the difference is that the link is remove it first in the client. So we have something that's called latency compensation. So for your client, it's just going to be like a local change in Minimongo. It's going to be really, really fast for your client, even if they are in a very slow collect con connection. And even if you don't like to have the, your methods running in the client, sometimes you can also avoid that, put in the server or you can do like, okay, meter is client and you could uh, like abort this run or you could use like meter simulation, then you know like it's just a simulation of the method in the client. Like you can do a lot of tricks here if you don't want to have that, or you can just have these files in the server so meter is not going to be able to have access to this code in the client. But it's pretty powerful because now it's going to recreate all the, the links again. But even if you are in a slow connection, it's going to, to work really fast for your client. And even if you are just using the server, the DDP, protocol, you can see it's pretty, pretty, pretty light. Like we are just sending a few bytes here, then it's going to be really fast anyway. And that's really, really nice. We're going to replay here, but our our uh, link is not there anymore. So nothing's going to happen because I'm replaying with the same uh, parameters, with the same arguments, but that's it. So the last part that I want to show you is like, if you don't want to if you want to receive like the result here, also from the methods. So let's create like a fake example here, just like some way to get all the links from a method. And I don't need to provide any argument here. And I want to return just like link collections.find.fetch. Then I'm just going to return all the items here. So I can show you how to promisify your, no, I don't want to open. I just misclick it here. Sorry. Let me return here. Okay. So I have get links and this method is available now. Let's test it. Meter call get links. And not, nothing is going to be returned. Why? Because I need to provide a callback. Error result. And then I can put like console log result. And now it should return our link. We just have one link in the server. Then you just have the do tutorial link here. Okay. So, but if I don't want to provide a callback, I have like a small snippet that I use in some projects and I can also uh, paste here in the browser. You can paste in the code as well, like, but I'm going to paste in the browser. Let me clear this. So it's just a promise 
and I'm going to resolve the problems with the result. And if there is an error, I'm going to have this uh, rejected and I'm going to have this mature call. Then now, because I am putting this here, I can call like this, mature call, and I can do the same, get links. But the advantage now is that I'm using like a promisefied version of this, of mature methods, then I can just get my link here with the await keyword. And if I inspect my links variable here, I have my link again. So this is just uh, like a small utility that you can have if you prefer to use promise based calls instead of like callbacks. And then you can have a very clean way to call your methods as well. Okay, so that was it. Like we learned a little bit about mature methods. We learned how to call it in a very simple way. You learn how to call provide an object. You learn how to validate the arguments. You learn as well how to promisify. And also what is simulation? Like what's the benefit that you can compensate the latency between your server and your client? I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you check other features that of Meteor that we are going to highlight here. See you in the next one. Bye.